yeah, like Mike said, I'm here to talk about trends, right? Super exciting. Um, so these are the trends that Really Good Email has curated over the past year. So we're going to you know, take a look at those and see how we can apply them to our own designs. Um, a bit of background on me. Uh, my name is Megan Sokolnicki. I am a designer and a developer for two ESPs, so um, Emma and Campaign Monitor. And uh, what I do is actually work directly with our clients. So I work with a ton of different brands, a ton of different people from all over the globe, really, with you know, different goals and different kind of brand styles to adhere to. Um, so rather than just design for my clients, I like to make a big part of that job about changing the conversation over just do this because it's been done before and move it more towards let's design in a way that's effective. Um, so when I'm saying effective design, what I'm trying to communicate is we want to make design decisions that kind of fall into one of these two categories. So comprehension and connection is what we're thinking about there. And with every good design decision, it should fall into one, right? Like, what are you trying to tell me? And how are you making me feel right now? And you know, hopefully, every great email does both. It's really effective at communicating that message, but also leaving this like, very positive influence. Um, so yeah, I want to keep that in mind when we're talking about trends too. Um, because when I start a lot of designs, the first thing I do is I want to hear from the client. Like, okay, you've hired us to do work for you, but now let me understand you. Like, what are your goals? What do you like to see? Nine times out of 10, I swear, everybody says the same thing. They say, we want it to be cool. We want it to be modern. Uh, and we want it to be trendy. <laughs> So, on it, like, let's, let's get real. Trendy is a bit of a trigger word for me, right? Because I just get all these people being like, I don't know, just like make it trendy. What does that mean? So trendy doesn't necessarily mean something is good. You know, it's just what we're all doing. So rather than show you these trends and say, yep, this is what's in right now. This is what you should go do. I want to take a more critical look at it, right? Like, how does that play into connection? and comprehension, and when is it appropriate to use these? Because we want to push ourselves, you know, we kind of want to expand our design palette, but we don't want to go overboard at the same time, right? So I think we're all on the same page here. Like the obvious comparison we have to go to is how trends would be used as if they were hot sauce, right? Like maybe I've been watching a little bit too, too much of hot ones lately. I, I don't know, but I started to think about it and it's like actually, this is kind of the perfect analogy for trends. Um, they add a lot of flavor, they add a lot of heat, uh, but in the same way, that can backfire. Like, not everybody has the same palette. Uh, you don't want to burn out by overusing a lot of these. So I think we take a look at these trends, we see what they're doing well, uh, we see how maybe they could be improved, and how to use them just like we would apply flavor elsewhere. So, trend one, pastel backgrounds. Super and like, yeah, I hear like, everybody's like, yeah, I know, we've seen this a million times. Um, pastel backgrounds, yeah, exactly that. We're moving more away from like uh, stark contrast with like white or all black, and now we're creating this kind of like friendly, uh, approachable, warmer design. You know, it feels, I feel more connected to it. So we're seeing people do this, um, you know, all over backgrounds, we're seeing color blocking. Uh, some layering of pastels. Like I love this knot pot example because they're really just kind of taking you on like this Easter Sunday stroll through a pastel garden there, which is fun to see. Uh, but they're still doing it really well because all of these have a lot of contrast with the text in their background. So it's still playing into comprehension pretty well. Um, yeah, so we saw a lot of that like kind of light pink beige being used a lot. Also seeing some cooler colors come into play, um, but it still creates the same effect. It still feels warm. It still feels interesting. Um, and also with some of these examples, like I'm getting kind of early email vibes from this. Like, does anyone remember like when we first got email and I, you change your background to like bright pink and your text is like bright green and you're like, yes, um, just me? Great. Um, but I feel like we're kind of playing on that early email theme. Uh, but in a more refined way. Like, this looks intentional, it helps stand out, but it's still kind of a subtle move. So, 
let's look at, at its best, at its worst. So at its best, great job of making this feel friendly, approachable, and honestly, like it's just more interesting than white. On the downside, <laughs> you, don't, you don't wanna go full Easter Bunny, you know? Maybe it's a lot when you start layering them, doubling down on that. Um, it also could feel kind of childish in that same way and restrictive. You know, maybe it doesn't fit your brand voice exactly. Um, so that could be a downside. You need to be considerate about how to use it. So got to go back to the hot sauce analogy here. If we're looking at heat on this one, it's like middle of the road, right? Like it still has flavor. It still tastes good. Um, but not a ton of spice, like it's not gonna knock you over. So I think you can feel confident in using this generously. Like just, just go for it, try it out. Still incredibly versatile. Like more quirky brands can go full on Easter Bunny if they want. Uh, more serious brands can kind of play with it through color blocking in, in kind of like a lighter yellow beige tone. So I'd, I'd go for this trend. Next trend that is huge, retro. <laughs> Pretty cool, yeah. Um, in retro, you're gonna see all of these trends. What's really interesting about this year is that they all play into one another. So we see this, we see pastels. We see more muted colors, less of that stark contrast again. Um, so yeah, I like seeing this, this trend actually. It's a lot of like 60s, 70s kind of inspiration here. And it just seems like a great way to just throw an artistic vibe into what we're creating. So we're starting to see this shift away from kind of modern, a ton of white um, within the designs, and now we're seeing more of an artistic uh, style being presented. Um, yeah, so these do a great job of showing up typography, but they also, because they're pulling from such strong inspiration, kind of sets a time and place for us. You know, when I think about the past, uh, what was it, 25 months? I, I have no idea what day it is. Um, but we think about this time that we're in that feels very uncertain, unpredictable. So it makes total sense to me that we would draw on some inspiration, maybe a time that made us feel a little more safe, um, that brings like some positive associations to us. So I see this as a way of trying to make our audience feel good, feel safe, feel comforted. Retro, however, not limited to just that kind of 70s style also, like 20 years ago style, early email, um, seeing some more, you know, playing with those background colors, playing with like more, you know, courier new type uh, font bases there. Um, so this really pulls on nostalgia as a tool, right? I'm, I'm remembering when this was popular. And also, like, I think even six years ago or so, I probably would have been like, that's tacky. Like, why are we doing this? But now it has such a, this positive association with me. Um, that's really powerful. I feel connected to those brands because I feel like we just have an understanding suddenly through design. Um, this is another one where we need to be considerate of our audience. You know, not everybody has the same association. You know, one person's like positive, happy uh, memory could be someone's, you know, awkward trauma that they don't want to revisit. So let's, uh, let's really consider the audience. I'm excited about this. I think if my dad saw some of these, he might like be a little worried. Um, so yeah, so at its best, um, creating that familiarity, which in turn establishes trust, really creates that connection with your audience. Um, also incredibly versatile, like retro just is not limited to those two decades. Like it, we can really pull from a lot of different things. On the downside, like I said, could be alienating. Not everybody's in on it. Not everybody understands the reference. Uh, also, it could feel a little confusing, right? If we're just suddenly like throwing in the 70s style, but our website or other brand materials are in a totally different uh, kind of vibe, that could be confusing. Like, why, why are we doing this? Um, what does this mean? Could be off-putting for some of your audience. So this is one where the audience is incredibly important here. This is a relatively heavy spice. Like, it, it's, uh, it's good, you get a lot of heat, you definitely need a glass of water with it. Um, so it's a use at your own risk kind of a thing. Know your audience, you know you're serving a large group of people, um, so just know who they are. I mean, you know, maybe grandma does not like a ton of heat, so just be considerate of who you're serving with this. Next trend, typography. It is 
hand in hand with retro. We saw a ton of typography treatments within the retro theme. Uh, and here as well, a lot of different inspiration we're looking at here. Um, and all of these examples are very different from one another, but they're all very effective at setting a mood. You know, I see each one of them and it kind of transports me. It, it tells me how I should feel about these mailings. They're very welcoming. They're also informative. So this plays into that comprehension piece a good amount. Um, so we're seeing this in a lot of different styles. Uh, we're seeing this, you know, very um, live, in live text. We're seeing this in illustration. A lot of different ways that this is being, uh, being handled. And I, you got to love the, the bold examples, too. Like, I, I really appreciate a brand that really goes for it, you know. But some of these more stylistic choices don't always tie into, um, you know, what we can do with live text in our emails. So it starts, the, the more like stylistic typography choices start uh, making it necessary for us to rely more on images. So anytime we use a really bold image to convey mood and convey an, a literal, you know, message, uh, we want to be considerate of what that looks like for people that can't see the email. You know, people that are interacting with it in a different way. Even if people, you know, just it's slow to load, they don't get that impact right away. So while I love seeing different brands, different designers uh, have incorporate this kind of treatment into their work, we always want to be super mindful of that experience. What are we doing with our color choices, other typography treatments through live text to help support that message? Um, also, just shout out to the free shipping example that did use live text, like, amazing. But you don't want to see that all the time, right? It starts to lose impact over time. So at its best, um, very good at grabbing my attention and very good at setting that mood, right? Like, all of those created a feeling. They set the scene very well for what we were about to share. Um, cons, legibility becomes a concern. You know, some of those were, um, the, you know, the illustrations might have been a lot, just depending on how far we push this, we start to lose some legibility. So we always want to consider that. Similarly, if our images are turned off, what is that experience? You know, repeating that text in the live text um, and considering how to create that mood elsewhere. So this is a, this is a decently hot spice. Like, you still want to use it. Like, it still tastes really good, um, but it's a use modestly. We don't want to see this all the time. Like I said, the more we use it, the more it loses its impact. So it's a fun one to bring out, like maybe on the weekend, you know, when you're feeling really good and, you know, bold. Okay, so typography was so interesting because in this way, it's moving away from the hero image, right? We're so used to seeing hero images. Typography is interesting because it allows us to focus on text rather than just putting an image in there just for the hell of it. However, we did not get rid of our hero image just yet. Uh, we kept it around and we just rounded the corners. So <laughs> we, uh, I think we felt good about it. I, I don't know, I, I do appreciate seeing this actually. You know, it's not, a, it's not a crazy move. We're still using a hero image. We're still kind of doing the same things that we've been doing for a long time, but I do appreciate seeing this approach. Right, that's just uh, that softening of the edge softens the whole mailing. It suddenly transports us a little bit into making this feel more welcoming. Ties right in with the other trends like pastels, um, typography and setting a mood. It's creating a warm feeling um, and rather than feeling so harsh. Um, yeah, so, so not, not a crazy move, not probably the most exciting trend, um, but it is interesting to see that we are so drawn to this the soft edge and we want to move away from anything that feels too rigid. Um, and this is a trend that pairs really well with just about everything else. Um, every other trend, so many different ways to do this, not limited to just the hero image. Also, um, yeah, throughout the mailing. So at its best, this is friendly. Again, all of these are pretty friendly. Um, it also creates this very tactile experience. I see those rounded edges. It reminds me of like buttons and, and apps, I'm like subconsciously inclined to click on it, to engage with it. Um, so it can be really effective at, at that, making you really want to interact with that mailing. 
Um, and also, it's pretty inoffensive. Like, I don't think anybody's going to be, like, pretty pissed off about seeing a rounded edge. So, um, you know, on the, the same side of that, the downside, it might not be that impactful. <laughs> not that impactful. Yeah, inoffensive. Yeah, if you're trying to make a splash, like, probably not going to do it. Like, you're throwing a pebble. But, you know, try it out. Um, maybe consider the curve, too. We saw some more extreme ones. We saw some, some smaller ones. You know, if you go too crazy and all of your stuff is like very curved, you don't want to feel like you're in a padded room. These are the things we have to think about as designers. So yeah, this is, this is a put that shit on everything. I mean, it's, it's mild. It's like a Taco Bell mild sauce, you know? It still tastes good. Like if, you, if it's not on the burrito, like you miss it, you need it. Um, but it's, yeah, it's, it's yeah, just, just try it. <laughs> All right. Um, this is a personal favorite of mine. I uh, am very excited to see hand models represented. Um, shout out to the industry. This, this one feels personal because uh, for those of you who don't know, who aren't aware of my work, I once held an ice cream cone posing for a photo. So I do consider myself uh, a professional hand model. I'll, I'll sign autographs later. Um, yeah, so I'm really hoping that this is like a well-received trend because it's pretty beneficial to my you know, side hustle. Um, seriously, uh, yeah, we really liked hands. Uh, yeah, I, I have a lot of feelings about the hands. And yeah, I'm using this time just to talk through my feelings here because I'm trying to process, is this creepy, is this cute? I love seeing the hands interact. Like, it, it shows me something I've been missing over the past two years. Like, I don't know about the rest of you. I haven't had a ton of social interaction. So it's fun to see another human, <laughs> like, just a hand. It's like, oh, they're still out there. Uh, so I like seeing the ones interacting. It's still creating that human connection, a literal human connection. People sharing things, people sharing food. I mean, part of me, is like, I hope they're vaccinated, like, I, I hope that's okay, but, you know, it's, it's telling a story, and um, it's very effective at setting that mood and creating this connection with the audience. Um, very uh, nice to see it used with products as well, like, incredibly smart to use it with products to show scale, to show how we should be interacting with something. Um, I also think it's a case where you educate your hand models before you give them your product, like, I, I don't have a Sonos speaker, but I am curious how it like defies gravity. Um, I, yeah, I, uh, yeah, these, it, it really lets my mind wander with some of these. Um, how is that happening? If anyone knows, let me know. And, and in the same way, yeah, it starts feeling distracting when we're just putting hands in there just for the hell of it. Like, it, it reminds me of, does anyone remember like the Gilmore Girls reboot where they were holding mugs? And, and everybody like freaked out because they were holding the mugs in this way that no one would ever drink out of. So when done wrong, like this starts to go wrong. Uh, like the, the shoe, um, if I had to pick a limb, you know, to model a shoe, I probably wouldn't be the first limb I would choose. But you know, and the stool, like I, I don't, I hope the stool's okay. You know, have we checked in with the stool? Um, but, you know, the last example, uh, the Ashley & Co. example, that is for hand sanitizer. And, I mean, get it. Like, just, you got to show us hand sanitizer in some way. So, I, I'm all for it. Uh, so, yeah. So, at its best, humanizing, right? So, a literal human is now in the mailing. Um, and that helps us establish trust. This also helps things feel very tangible. Um, shows off products very nicely. How do we use something? How do we interact? A lot of these are creepy to me, though. I mean, you got to do it well. You got to do it. You got to do it in a smart way because then it starts to become distracting, right? I really focused on a lot of those images. I did not read past the image. I don't really know what the intent of some of those mailings were um, because I'm distracted by what's happening with this, you know, creative choice. So, very spicy. This one um, can really split the crowd with this one. This is a use with caution. Uh, Good flavor, lots of heat, 
not for everybody. Definitely know, know your audience, but more importantly, know your brand. How are you using this? Is it with a real model? Is it with illustrations? Um, a lot to consider. So if you do choose to use it, I'd, I'd advise some caution. Okay, mosaic photography, which is, um, you know, to put it simply, it's just kind of a grouping of photos that creates this kind of collage effect. Uh, and I look at this trend and I think, yeah, we have uh, been inside doing puzzles for a while and we put our puzzles in our designs. Now, of course we would do digital puzzles now, um, but I actually really like this one uh, because we're working within that grid format that we know we have to just embrace it as email designers, um, but we found a new way to set a mood. So when we look at these photos, we're not focusing on the individual, uh, you know, individual photographs, we're reading them as a whole. So rather than focus on selling us a product, it's more selling us a mood. Like the REI example, I don't know what the photos are, but I feel like I should hike this year. You know, like I should climb a mountain. And the Apple example, on the same note, like I don't know what they're selling, I don't really know what they're looking at, but I see people and they are collaborating and they are, it's a sense of community. So it's this very effective tool at creating that connection component that's important. Um, yeah, see what I mean about puzzles? I, I just see puzzles when I, I look at this, but I'm not mad about it. Um, yeah, a lot, of, uh, a lot of different ways that this is done. I'm excited to see where this goes next, right? We're doing it primarily with images right now. I'm curious to see an evolution of this. Um, what happens when we start putting live text around that? Again, with any image component we put in our designs, we want them uh, to have backups for when images are not available. Um, so I'm curious to see it paired with live text. Maybe the images drop out to color. Maybe color starts setting the mood. So I, I think we're gonna continue to see kind of an evolution of this in the coming year. So at its best, definitely great at creating mood. Um, very versatile. So many different brands could use this in so many different ways. Um, also great at embracing that email grid, but not for everyone. Um, this is one that doesn't need to feel forced. You know, aren't we tired of just kind of slapping stock photography on our emails just because we feel like we're supposed to? We don't want this to feel forced. We want it to feel very purposeful. Um, so, so important to be considerate about that. Um, again, becomes image heavy. So middle of the road spice here, like, but a really intense flavor, not that hot. So it could be used a lot but uh, it mostly just tastes really good. So use it sparingly. You know, you don't want to overpower your mailings. You don't want to see this maybe in every campaign that you send, um, but it's a nice, you know, throw this sauce in your bag and like just have it so it's ready for the right application. Okay, um, this one. In the past, we have laid to rest the trend of neon green, um, but that little sucker came back. Uh, has risen from the grave, has taken the form of uh, glow in the dark now. So dark mode is not going away. This is something that we're gonna continue to see. Uh, we just found a new way to help uh, to embrace that dark mode. So I'm actually, I mean, you can probably tell, not crazy about like the neon trend in general, um, but I don't mind the glow in the dark because Similar to the other trends and the other themes that we're seeing, this still has that softness. You know, there's not a lot of it within a single mailing. There's still the soft edge. Um, we're seeing it a lot with icons, uh, a lot of text. Uh, one thing I think that is really important with this is not overusing it. Um, it's glow in the dark. You know, there has to be dark around it for it to stand out. Um, so, yeah. We're seeing it in signage. We're also seeing it in uh, you know, screens, like reflecting our actual experience back to us. Um, we're seeing the glow of the screen. Um, we're also seeing, again, a lot of the same themes, a lot of the same other trends overlap, like shout out thumb, the hand model, um, and the pastels. So we're taking what was once this bold statement and we're still softening it because we still don't want it to feel too harsh. So, at its best, great at embracing dark mode, obviously. 
Um, it also feels playful, you know? It feels special. I think if this gets overused, it, it loses that, but, um, but when it is used, it, it does create an impact and sets, sets a kind of fun, friendly mood. Um, also, the, seeing the screen glow come into effect, um, it's creating familiarity. It's creating a human experience. It's, it's showing us ourselves in the mailing once again. But uh, overdone, too much neon gets a little gets a little Vegas for me. Becomes a little gimmicky. You know, we don't want to do things that are too much. We want to use this in a very refined way so that it has that great impact. So, just a dab will do on this one. Um, good amount of heat, a lot of heat. Don't want to use it all the time. O overuse loses that impact just a little bit. Okay, textbook call out. Um, and similar to dark or the um, glow in the dark trend, textbook callout is just an evolution of another trend, right? It's it's just color blocking, pretty much. But you know, you know us this year, we put rounded edges on it. Um, so now, yeah, we're just evolving this trend in kind of a new way. But it's an old staple we've seen around. Uh, it's not as exciting probably as some of the other trends. But as somebody that does work with clients. A lot of my job is creating repeatable systems for them. So seeing a trend like this become popular is really nice because I tell them all the time, like, if you don't have images, if you don't have a design background and you just need something, throw a color block in there. It's a great way to add some color. It's a great way to highlight information. So this one really plays up that comprehension uh, you know, theme that we're, we're trying to follow. Um, great to be used with checklists. Um, also, you know, alerts, your restaurant uh, might be closing because of COVID kind of things we've seen at the top of every mailing. Um, so yeah, yeah, not, not as exciting, but it's still happy to see it represented this year. So at its best, uh, Highlights Text does a great job of doing that, creating that visual friction that allows our eye to stop and focus. So by creating that, that break, it's helping improve our comprehension um, to ultimately create an effective email. Um, also, add a great way to add some color, just some other visual interest when you don't have a lot of other things going on. Um, on the downside, overuse becomes pretty ineffective. I, I like to say all the time that if everything is important, then nothing is important. So you don't want to see this everywhere. Um, you want to use it uh, wisely. So maybe it's something, when we think about it you know, as a hot sauce, it's pretty mild. You know, it doesn't, uh, you know, it's, it's not going to like rock your world when you open up the mailing, but it does just enough to help that comprehension piece. So this is something that you should use frequently. You know, maybe don't use it a lot within a single mailing because then it starts to become ineffective, but I wouldn't be worried about applying this um, as kind of a, a regular cadence in your design templates. Okay. The fun one, wavy surfer breaks, uh, or wavy lines. Yeah, we felt really fun this year. And I, I, I don't know, yeah, this is my technical opinion. Like, these are fun, but they are, they are. Um, I think this shows clearly, like, diagonal lines are out. We don't want hard edges, we want soft, we want comforting, we want fun. We just want fun after the past couple of years. Um, and a lot of these brands are delivering on this. Um, so we're seeing the, the wavy you know, surfer break line in a lot of different ways. These are a little more extreme. Um, the cloud shape, um, the really tight waves together show a lot of personality. But we're also seeing other brands try it um, in, in maybe a, a more subtle way. Maybe the wave is, is you know, just, just a little bit. Um, so it doesn't have to go full on like surfer but we're seeing this kind of nice shape appear in place of what, where we previously had diagonal lines or maybe just a straight horizontal line. So it's still adding personality, but it's not overpowering. Um, and it also becomes kind of a directional tool, right? We're using it to help transition between these different sections, transition between ideas, transition between colors. So in a way, when I look at comprehension and connection, this one can actually do both. Um, which, which is a great tool to use, but um, maybe not everywhere. So at its best, very whimsical, shows a ton of personality, really fun to see, makes me personally very happy. 
um, and provides direction. We can use that to help lead the eye where we want to go, force people, um, not force people, but guide people to what we want them to you know, intake. Uh, on the downside, you don't want to feel seasick, right? A lot of those waves could be a lot, could be distracting once again. You know, any of these trends when done well are so effective. When they're overused, it completely negates that. It can be completely construct, uh, re yeah. So not for every, not for every brand perhaps. Um, there's a lot of different ways this could be used. Um, so you can see more subtle applications of this, but maybe like I don't want bad news for my doctor with like a ton of wavy notes, like lines on it. I don't, I don't know, maybe. But uh, so this is a hot trend, it's very hot. So you don't want to use it a lot. This is a just, just a tad here. Um, it's fun, it's still versatile, uh, but it's spicy. So spicy in a good way. Like it's not going to ruin your day afterwards. You know what I mean? But it's something to try. All right, arches. Arches are huge this year. Why, why did we go so hard on arches? Um, yeah, they started popping up kind of in the fall and now they're just everywhere. Um, so arches are simply that arch shape, uh, you know, facing upward, facing downward, uh, could pull from like windows or doors. There's a ton of different ways that these are being, this shape is being represented. Um, and I think the arch trend has a really powerful way of creating depth. You know, it's really setting a scene and kind of centering your human perspective to focus in on what you're showing. Um, so we're seeing it a lot with photography um, as a way to highlight, you know, a product or a headline. Um, so another great tool at creating this mood, setting the scene, taking me somewhere else for a moment, um, but still effective at communicating and creating that visual friction. So yeah, we're seeing it with photos, we're seeing it with illustration, sets a happy mood, but you know, some people's rainbow is another person's tombstone. So, you know, just be careful and know, yeah, know what you're trying to say. Um, but all in all, I think this is a, a great trend. Uh, if we look at our pros here, it adds depth, it focuses our attention, it sets that time and place. Um, creates that visual break for us. Um, on the downside, again, overuse loses impact. Uh, we probably don't want to see more than one arch at a time, you know, like McDonald's can do that, but maybe not like all of us can use double arches. Um, and perhaps too trendy, like this feels like a trend, you know, it feels kind of like a flash in the pan, very trendy, everyone's on board. So I think in the same way, it's gonna go out of style quickly. Um, maybe it's already out of style, honestly, because we've been doing it for a couple of months. So when we're thinking about how to use it, uh, very spicy, creates a ton of heat, but it's kind of like a novelty kind of heat. So I'm from Nashville and you know, hot chicken is our thing. And you know, one of the rating scales is a get the cluck out. So in my mind, this is like a get the cluck out. Like you don't, you don't need it all the time, but you gotta know, like you have to know how you handle that spice um, just for the novelty. So I think this is one we can all try. Any brand could use this because um, there's so many different ways that this could be applied uh, through illustrations, through photography. So it's a try it, but you know, it, maybe it could do some harm to you after a, a while of continuous use. Um, so kind of, some honorable mentions here. These are less about the actual design application and more about the content that we're seeing. Um, so similar to the other temp or the other trends, the other examples, we went in on human connection here. We're seeing a lot of dedicated referrals. So rather than just, you know, kind of a, a mention at the bottom of an email, we're seeing entire campaigns devoted to this human experience, getting you involved, creating that relationship between uh, the brand and the recipient. Um, similarly, social proof. We, companies really want to show us how cool they are. Uh, they they want to share testimonials. They want to share uh, ratings. So we're seeing you know, pull quotes and stars, uh, a lot of different ways to, to show that. But I think the message is more about just showing, showing that human interaction. Hey, we are real. 
uh, we want to interact with you on this level. Take the, don't listen to us. Listen to our, uh, you know, our clients, our brand ambassadors, if you will. So what does it all mean? Right? We went through 10 trends. We saw some honorable mentions. But what does it mean? Like, the trends this year were particularly interesting to me because they all related to one another. We rarely saw just one trend being used. We saw them kind of piled together um, to, to create similar themes throughout. So if we go back and we look at you know, our kind of chart of effectiveness, comprehension, we saw textbook callouts. We saw arches to help focus our, uh, our attention. Um, but we really, really went in on connection this year. Um, we, we wanted to show our personality. We wanted to show the wavy lines. We wanted to show the pastels. We wanted to show our retro inspired ideas. Um, so if, if we look at some underlying themes, they all fell into one of these categories, creating that human connection, right? Literally putting hands on stuff, uh, creating a soft feeling, a comforting feeling a nostalgic feeling that can be incredibly powerful in helping us relate on a human level. So as we go forth and use these trends, I think it's important to consider the underlying theme is we just want people to feel good. We are asking for it as recipients, and our job as designers is not only to communicate, but be, but be able to create that positive experience. So we want to feel good. We want to feel encouraged. We want to be able to use our designs to make us feel good about our relationship. So we want to feel really good. So go forth, use the designs at your own risk, um, but ultimately keep in mind we want to feel good and we want to continue to nurture a human-to-human -human interaction. Thank you.